Can you hear me, guys? I can't yeah. hear anybody. Hold I on. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Hello. Hello. You were saying something, uh, Money? No, no, nothing. Nothing from me. Somebody else. Anyway, welcome to the uh, Capital Market uh, big meeting. We have two things to uh, declare before we start. One is the uh, antitrust policy. We have to follow the Hyperledger antitrust policy uh, that is available on Hyperledger. The second is a code of conduct, which uh, says that we have to treat each other with respect. And after this, uh, we start on the meeting and I noticed several uh, people are on the call that uh, were not around before. And if uh, people want to introduce themselves, that would be great. Uh, let me start with uh, the new people, Jagadish. Just have to yeah. say a few words about who you are and why you're interested. And, uh, you know, keep it, please keep it short. Thanks. Yeah, I'm Jagdish from Swapsar. I work with money. And I oh, yes, of in, course. Yeah, I work in each other uh, uh, token. Uh, Jagnath? Hi, uh, my name is Jagannath Thotli. I got introduced to this by Kirti, and uh, I'm a, a blockchain enthusiast. Thank you. Any connection with capital markets or? Not, not much, to be honest. Okay. Um, Mike? First of all, is this the capital markets group or the Ursa group? This is the capital markets group. I, I don't know. I'm on the wrong link then. I apologize. Uh, um, I think uh, the Ursa group um, changed the meeting to this week, although I don't know whether they're using the backup uh, Zoom or not. OK. I was, yeah, I was told it was the backup Zoom, but I'll have to go into another one. Thank you, Doug. OK, thank you. This is not their regularly scheduled meeting, uh, but I don't see anybody else from the URSA group. Uh, Jim, are you here for the URSA or the capital markets? Capital markets. Great. Uh, Junji? Uh, yes, I'm with Itau. It's a Brazilian bank. Uh, I used to provide uh, support for the trading desk for equities. Uh, and I have been uh, in the blockchain space for the last couple two years. I was part of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, where I met uh, Vipping in one of the token uh, taxonomy events. And uh, yeah, I've been joining this group, not consistently though, for the past uh, few months. So Junji, are you going to make uh, that presentation next week about the security token stuff? Yeah, actually, uh, since Natalia shared about bonds issuance in our last meeting, and I don't know if we had in the past in this group a presentation about equities, I just wanted to provide a, an overview from the entire life cycle from uh, when the, uh, the buy side uh, places the order and how the broker dealer, uh, they execute the order uh, throughout the seven execution brokers and exchanges about the trade and the execution, uh, the block trade allocations, reconciliation. I think just providing maybe a holistic view of the process. Uh, primarily it will be secondary market. Uh, but uh, I'm hoping that it would help maybe the folks that might not have maybe a holistic view of the equities process, maybe. So if that's helpful, uh, I'm willing to do that. Yeah, please. Next uh, next time we, we, we can talk about that. Um, Money? Um, yeah, uh, Money, live from Swapsub. 
you know, working with this group, for, I guess, from, from the early days, uh, have contributed to the Italo project. So that's short for us. Um, who else uh, is there that I left out? Uh, Karen, of course. We seem to have disappeared. Hi, Vipin. Satish here. Yes. Hello, guys. I just joined. Yeah. If you wanted to um, talk a little bit about why you're here and what your involvement is with the capital market. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. I've been working in capital market for like 20 years plus now. Uh, uh, Junji has been uh, nicely explaining some of the things I do as well. Junji, I am one of the you know eight execution brokers you talked about. So I work for one of them. Uh, we do end-to-end -end for pretty much every asset class. With capital markets, I have been in investment banks, Citibank, Deutsche Bank. I've been in retail, commercial, trade finance, part of it. And now I work in execution broker space, uh, venues, exchanges space. So that's what I do. And asset class wise, we, we trade everything. All derivatives, equity derivative, interest rate, everything. So that's Great. me in short. In terms of why I'm here, I, I do see that um, there is a large marriage that is uh, well due and probably going to happen between the crypto style world and the traditional financial capital markets. So I think, I think uh, it's important to kind of uh, come and contribute. People who know the process and things should actually take those use cases forward with something like Hyperledger. That's why I'm here. Great. Yeah. You, you emailed us um, about this uh, before uh, last week, right? I mean, basically. Yeah. So I was being, I was working with Finos. Finos is the, the financial open source kind of forum. Uh, we kind of have a big representation in London with Finos. Uh, now Finos is part of Linux Foundation. We don't want to run a separate D DLT group, like Distributed Ledger Technology Group. It makes sense to bring the Finos group also folded into Hyperledger. Um, we have a different take on it, but pretty much we are all all solving the same same thing and contributing, the, you know, the, the you know, contributing into Hyperledger the code and the processes. You know that will help everyone. So I think we should um, start off with um, with the um, latest uh, developments on Ethalar, which Money and Jagdish can provide because they have contributed the most into this um, effort. It can be very short right now, but we'll uh, elaborate with a different presentation and demo and other things later. Um, so uh, Jagdish and I have been working on this uh, Ethaler uh, CBDC token implementation, um, I guess for the past three months, I would say. Um, we looked at originally at uh, uh, an ERC-20 token um, but for institutional use, uh, and again, the, the, the focus is very narrow to uh, only address uh, the interaction between a, a central bank and, uh, and let's say, commercial banks. And that, that's our uh, initial scope is. Uh, to meet that, um, we wanted to have an institutional style contract, and we felt that um, an ERC-11 device suited much better than other, other uh, ERC tokens. Um, we made the proposal and we implemented it. Uh, we tested it. We, we, you know, gone through uh, cycles of implementing on the, the contract on various uh, uh, Ethereum um, uh, on various various Ethereum uh, uh, solutions, including um, uh, Truffle and Dinage, and then eventually moved to a hyperledger Besu, which is more of an institutional uh, uh, private blockchain. So we had the, uh, the, the contract deployed and running and um, uh, Jagdish had helped build that uh, a, a command line interface uh, that would actually interact with the tokens. Uh, over the past few, few weeks, I, I know that um, uh, Vipin had shown all the, you know, the, the original design of the specification, how it's been implemented in TTF. So I don't want to go into that details. 
all that we know that uh, we can say today is that is uh, this all this code has been uh, submitted it's in open source under hyperledger uh, anyone can take it and build it and test it and we we put out a short blurb on uh, linkedin as well um, and you know i hope to get other people to contribute on top of this So the main thing to note here is that uh, we now have a, you know, I, I have built the Java client and I was able to connect to the uh, uh, running version in SwapSub as a dealer, I mean, as a actually central bank and I was able to do some things but I wanted to uh, do a full-fledged demo as a dealer uh, and as a central bank and to see and to show how the, uh, how the interactions happen. The second thing I wanted to uh, uh, you know, say is that we'll take this forward a little bit. One is uh, Kirti has, uh, um, has volunteered to do something on the UI, and I still owe him the uh, specs for that UI, but it will basically be driven by the functions that are already available in the uh, Java client. Uh, the second part is that the uh, the you know we 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 will take it forward uh, by demonstrating of the uh, UI if it is available. And then we have a couple of other points that uh, we'll talk about uh, a little later. Um, now I, I have a, two things more uh, on the agenda and of course open, um, open discussion on these topics. One is that uh, there was a, you know, we had uh, started the work in the Itala project by working on the token taxonomy framework, which was uh, open standard. Uh, um, well, it was an open standard, uh, but uh, the uh, there was a closed GitHub uh, for just defining the artifacts, and the open standard work. Uh, was what we based our Ethaler work on, and we actually contributed back the definition of Ethaler. But now we hear that um, the there was an announcement yesterday about Interwork Alliance, which is basically uh, an organization that has uh, migrated away from EEA, but will still refer to the token taxonomy framework, uh, but their ambitions are a lot broader uh, and they have an incredible list of participants. This includes people like Accenture, DA, uh, data providers like Amber Data. I don't know whether the standard data providers, then uh, there's IBM, there is, uh, you know, all the big, uh, there is exchanges like uh, SIX, there are uh, research and development uh, organizations. So I prepared a small um, slide deck that talks about this and our involvement. Um, and before I present that, are there any comments about IWA or anything else, uh, you know, dealing with this by anyone on the call. A quick question, just a slide deck since I'm new to this. I mean, I know EEA, I don't know what the new organization is and in a sense where they're headed. So if you can post well, this I'll, the meeting notes, that'd be great, thanks. Yeah, I mean, it was only announced yesterday. So it is unclear to me. Uh, I mean, they have obviously a website and everything else. Um, and uh, I think I have a feeling that we will be watching them to see what they're going to come up with. So let's let's talk about it here. 
and I'm going to just share my screen unless you, you guys have uh, more to say on the topic. All right, so here is, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, so, you know, I just knocked it together because, uh, uh, you know, this morning in about 10 minutes. So, uh, you know, please uh, forgive me if it doesn't uh, look too professional. Um, anyway, so this is the aim of the, this is the aim of the IWA, standardized token powered ecosystems. We have been he hearing about the uh, problems with uh, uh, getting scale and adoption in token powered ecosystems for a variety of reasons, especially in capital markets, because it's a highly regulated uh, enterprise, uh, a highly regulated space. Uh, in the end, both uh, the EEA, I mean, both the SEC and the FINRA in the United States and in elsewhere want to have control over how tokens are created, uh, traded, settled, custodied, uh, and retired. And of course, the uh, life cycle of the token in terms of payments or any other uh, sort of uh, activity. The problem is the SEC and the FINRA do not buy into this whole, the smart contract is the law, the, you know, narrative. And that's what, you know, the, Satish mentioned it slight, uh, very briefly there. One was there is the existing cryptocurrency ecosystem and then there is a the capital market ecosystem. How can these two come together? In, you know, essentially that will be what uh, drives the new economy. Uh, and this is a very, going to be a very difficult birth because as with many initiatives, we have the wide spectrum view that is on the one end of the spectrum, everybody wants, uh, you know, smart contracts to drive everything and all of the institutions to disappear. On the other end is the traditionalists who view that nothing needs to be changed. Everything is perfect the way it is today. Obviously the reality is somewhere in between. And I think that the IWA is taking it uh, more towards the first uh, dragging the uh, people in the, uh, conservative camp more towards the camp that says smart contract is the law. But we are a long way away from that. Uh, anyway, so they are trying to put together standards. Uh, and this is, of course, a snarky comment that says the ni nice thing about standards is that there are so many to choose from. So will this become yet another standard that will join the standards graveyard or will it uh, get uh, adoption? That is a question we have to wait and watch, even though there are so many, uh, many, uh, uh, so many institutions and uh, bodies that adopt standards. Um, the next slide just sketches out from their website the three things that they're going to work on. One is they're still going to ex uh, use the token taxonomy framework for defining uh, tokens and the behavior of tokens. The second is they're going to do this interwork framework, um, where, which when they have taken it out of the EEA, they basically said, we are going to be technology neutral. That means it's no longer just about Ethereum. Uh, it is about uh, technology neutrality, which means any 
uh, blockchain technology that can be adopted to this new ecosystem can be used to issue, you know, to can be issued, uh, can be used to uh, to govern or, or to automatically issue and uh, trade primary market settlement, secondary market, uh, you know, all the other corporate actions and economic uh, life cycle events, uh, including retirement or buybacks and so on. Uh, but the, the, the second aspect is the communication protocols to be defined and connected to the framework components. So I do not know how they are going to uh, define this uh, standard for this framework for such a huge ecosystem. Uh, we'll wait and see. And we know that there are uh, existing standards for contracts, uh, that are available or being made available for the new economy, including CDM, uh, common uh, domain model uh, by ISDA and others. The second part, uh, I mean, the third prong is the analytics framework where they want to do a uh, privacy preserving process and data scheme for value added services on top of the data that is present or reachable from the blockchain and to do market driven data reporting on top of it. All very ambitious goals. Um, you know, I, I, I get the feeling that we have to wait and watch and see. The next one is what are we going to do in this with this uh, new consortium? In the short term, we continue on the token taxonomy framework until we have clarity. That is my view. Uh, of course, we can have other viewpoints. Uh, Money and I had a, a debate about this just just now, uh, which will uh, also clarify some of the uh, issues we'll have, which will be the next item on the discussion. Uh, uh, that's, that's for now for uh, IWA. If anybody has any, um, and I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. And uh, if anyone has, uh, you know, any comments, it'll be welcome right now. Uh, yeah, just a quick thing. First of all, um, given the goals you showed for the network, I'll assume, number one, that they would base, in a sense, in this network, all identities on DIDs. Um, I'm guessing that. Of course, we don't know that, but I'm assuming that would, if you really want to have a, I'll call it a peer marketplace, number one. Number two, in your goals, you pointed out data sharing. And so if you're gonna do data sharing, in theory, it would be nice if the people that generated the data had ownership of the data. Again, a DID model would support that. And my last thought is just that if, there, if this thing is trying to be somewhat neutral on the blockchain platforms um, and don't wanna spend five years developing um, specifications, it might be, there, it would make sense if they would, um, in a sense, try to reuse some of the work that's already been done in Cactus, in Hyperledger Cactus. Well, even the DID stuff uh, is still in um, its infancy in terms of adoption. Uh, but not the mechanics of it. I would agree with you. So if you look at widespread, no, it's not. But is it effectively running in production? Yes, it is. And so um, it's not, I'll call it experimental software at this point, it's production software. And so looking at a DID model, if you will, um, it's more than just a technology, of course. So when you look at this group and what they're trying to do with currencies and sensor tokens, you look and say, okay, um, a huge part of this is not the technology, it's really around whatever the governance is gonna be, back to your earlier points. You know, what's legal on a smart contract? What are the governance rules? You know, who, which uh, jurisdictions are you comply with? There's a million 
there's more stuff on that side of the fence than there is on the technology side for sure. Money, you have something to add? No, I think what Jim uh, says is, is, is right, uh, spot on. Uh, there's a lot more uh, uh, jurisdictional issues and regulatory issues that comes into play. And that's why we wanted to uh, you know, narrow down to say, hey, this is, this is cooked. This, whatever token we're building must be uh, minimally regulatory compliant. And that's why uh, some of the rules that we've written, you put in, in terms of compliance rules, you know, we focus on as well. So at least we can say, hey, there's an experimentation that, uh, you know, for an institutional marketplace or in a regulated market space is very well applicable. Uh, and not only that, we also made it generic enough that the same token can be used for commercial banks to issue their own tokens and interact with their. Uh, let's say peers and and and, and their and their customers. Uh, again, uh, the focus is for only institutional space. Um, when the broader discussions about CBDC issued by a central bank or in some sort of that, you know, then the retail might come into the picture. Uh, in fact, uh, Vipin and I have been going back and forth on you know, how do you handle a retail. It's that's a big topic. Um, but if we narrow down to institutional market space, it's much much more easier to adopt and define and because much of it is all already regulated and uh, you know there are rules and frameworks already in place and so there's a market practice you just have to apply those practices to you know digital token space jim you were mentioning that there are a lot of things in production um for did um adoption one thing i saw was uh, you know, the whole uh, Canadian uh, BC government wallet. Yeah, um, it, yeah, it's more than the wallet, obviously, but you're right. That what they built in effect, it's actually pretty interesting because what they built is, yes, they, they created a solution for BC government called VON, Verifiable Organizations Network. Um, and in that, they created something called Org Book, but all of that's based on DIDs and production with uh, Indie Aries wallets and all that stuff. But the bigger thing that they did, which as I looked at it closer, I started to understand it better, is they didn't just build a blockchain solution. What they built is, in a sense, a platform for those kind of solutions, which is pretty cool. So yeah, they took Indie Aries at, in a sense, where it is at this point in development, but they've actually created this thing. So if I wanted to set up an organization, I can create what I call my own org book um, using, in a sense, their templates, which is actually pretty cool. Um, so, uh, the, and it is running in production, obviously, but the uh, province of Ontario has also, in a sense, been the second uh, organization or government uh, that grabbed what BC did. And they've also created an org book you know, in a sense, proving the fact that, in a sense, the template that BC had built is usable uh, independently, which is actually pretty cool. So, um, you know, to me, that's sort of the better story. It's not just that they're doing DIDs in production, which they are, but that they, they and you've seen the trust, because you wrote the article on that trust over IP framework, which is actually very good that you did for Forbes. But Yeah, I'm a member. Yeah. Right, so, you, so you're intimately familiar with, in a sense, what they've architected. But the point of it is, Ontario now has picked it up and created their own org book off of that template, if you will. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, when we run the, uh, um, both the uh, TOIP and the uh, Hyperledger Identity Working Group, which I convene, uh, we have seen uh, people like uh, the Kochi, uh, uh, you know, it's a it's a city in southern India. They wanted to implement the org book there. Uh, there was uh, there were people from uh, Indian province, but I also see in the um, in the uh, IWA the Hyderabad, uh, which is a, a city in India, also smart. City group is also involved in this standard setting process. But back to DIDs, other than this org book and other things, what are the other, uh, you know, is there a list of uh, production DID implementations? 
I mean, I'm only harping on the DID implementations because as we know, identity is very important uh, for any operations on the blockchain, including the capital markets uh, based operations. So the one big thing about the identity side of it, I would say is that what I liked about BC, I like two things that they did. Number one, they took the Indy platform for, along with the Aries uh, project for building out identity. Yes, it's DID. And you're right that there's other, um, I'll call it stacks, supposedly, that could be done in production today that are not based on Indy Aries for DIDs. Um, and I don't know enough on my end, haven't researched them. What I will say is what's nicer about Indy um, is the fact that Indy comes with the notion of zero knowledge proofs to reduce um, data sharing and uh, in improve privacy, right? So other DID frameworks don't necessarily have ZKP as part of those for what it's worth. And so when you look at something, especially involving money, um, in theory, you would like to say, oh yeah, this framework has the ability to really um, uh, deliver a high degree of privacy. And so it's not just the IDs, but it's the privacy along with it that you get with Indy that to me makes that a, a great platform choice. But it definitely is not the only one. I know there's, I guess, other ones. If you look at the DID specifications from W3C and so on, there's other companies that are in there. And I'm sure other people are trying to build platforms as well. Just the fact that we have Indian Aries farther down the road and it does support ZKP for privacy were the two things I really liked about it for what it was worth. Yeah, but the ZKP is for the uh, um, for the link secret for peer-to-peer -peer wallets exchanging DIDs uh, in order to stop correlation. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. let's not go down that rabbit hole right now because that'll take up the rest of the um, rest of the meeting. But I wanted to get back to that, uh, you know, that interaction between identity and and any other application, including capital markets ones later. Now, the second thing that we wanted to talk about was, okay, before we go to that particular aspect, Kirthi had asked uh, about a couple of things. Um, he wanted to uh, propose a uh, insurance uh, work related, you know, to open source uh, insurance because it has some implications, for example, for custody. Uh, the second thing is he was also talking about some kind of a commodity token. So I wanted to ask him to do, a, a, you know, to talk about what he what he had in mind. Thanks, Whipin. Um, so for from insurance perspective, um, the whole idea is that uh, the London market and the company market are currently looking at um, building uh, something which is more aimed towards the future. So they're, they're trying to solve some uh, traditional problems which are similar to capital markets, both on the buy and the sell side uh, that you currently face today. One is, in this case, uh, what they're trying to sell is diversification of risk, possibly even call it uh, in the future state, hopefully a risk token perhaps, with attached um, premium that is paid as a part of the collateralization or risk mitigation process. But I, I, saw, I thought that this was an interesting aspect and, and, and uh, um, some of the basic fundamental structures and framework that, that we are currently working on could possibly be used uh, in, in a similar form, uh, uh, even, even in the insurance market as well. So that's, that was one thought process. Um, the secondary aspect, the, the second point that I wanted to kind of bring up to this forum was, yes, we were talking about um, um, uh, bonds, we were talking about equity. I think commodity is also um, a possibly a, a token uh, framework for commodities as well would be 
possibly interesting. They've, there are several projects in the market where they've tried to do it uh, in, in the traditional way, but they have failed to a certain extent to make it a full-fledged um, project, uh, at least even in the, in the real viable sense. So I was thinking that these two could possibly pose uh, good contenders. What is a stronger case for uh, insurance is the fact that insurance and capital markets kind of have a convergence uh, at one point, which is called as the insurance linked securities, which is the next, I would say, niche asset class, which we, people are trying to bring out to the uh, global markets uh, with, a, with a huge possibility of growth within uh, areas such as cat bonds, so which is an interesting prospect in itself. So I thought we could possibly look at it either as uh, uh, either insurance as its own SIG or possibly as a sub uh, project within the uh, capital markets because it's got, you know, kind of a similar theme associated to a, a syndicated loan or a bond and at the same time, it's uh, got some relations to the fact that it, it does link to the investors by the end of the day for certain types of assets which are based on uh, insurance markets. So that's, so, that's, that's a thought process. So for for uh, the insur uh, insurance diversification of risk, are those then um, created, uh, you know, are securities created from them and traded uh, today? Yes, they are, uh, but they're not, uh, they're over the counter and in uh, special jurisdictions, um, not, and it's, the market is very limited to very specific areas. So for, and it, it's an institutional space, to be honest. Yeah, I can add to that. So in London, we do do some kind of insurance brokering, like packaging insurances. It doesn't work like the way other capital markets work in diversifying risk. But there is an element of sort of reinsurance and other packaging. Um, and then there is like interbroker dealership also between insurance brokers. Exactly. So mo most of this process is kind of facilitated by special, special purpose vehicles um, by reinsurers who kind of use uh, what is known as a risk transfer contract to kind of generate collateral. And in exchange, they kind of float a uh, catastrophe bond which has a premium attached to it most of this is like over the counter style um, you know transaction but at the same time the interesting aspect of this is if if that is completely manageable over um, you know our distributed ledger that that would be an interesting project to look at okay i mean uh, you know there are all kinds of uh, things like that uh, i know for example in um, mortgages uh, the government agencies like fannie and freddie and Ginny are selling off uh, risk transfer bonds because they are actually uh, insurance agencies in a sense insuring mortgages um, and they are selling it off in regular capital markets. But notwithstanding all of this, uh, you know, the, the question uh, we come back to in the end is about uh, how best to model and to put in play the e-security uh, using a token taxonomy framework. How far do you go in defining a security, either a bond or a uh, equity, and how much of it can be enforced using a standard-based smart contracts and uh, triggering payments and so on automatically. And this is what IWA is bringing to the table uh, in, in, in a sense. Um, so we want to have us, you know, so there, like I said before, there is that debate on whether the traditional methods will take over, I mean, will still continue, sorry, or will there be new methods that are based more on 
uh, fully automated smart contracts. There are many things that argue against that second possibility. Uh, maybe for a small value customer, cryptocurrency transactions that can work uh, in terms of the DeFi and uh, so on. But for capital markets as a whole, will that work? I mean, this is the debate uh, that Money and I were having. And I said that it's going to be some kind of a hybrid model, but in the end, uh, there, uh, you know, Money's point I, I take, which is that in the end, there has to be an entity that needs, um, that can be held responsible by SEC or FINRA in the United States and other uh, regulatory agencies elsewhere in their jurisdictions. So uh, it is more, more going to function more as a token administrator and also the separation of uh, the, uh, you know, certain functions like the custody function has to be separated from uh, the other functions. So I, I just wanted to have, uh, you know, I just wanted to introduce that debate here and to see what people thought of that because it has direct implications on what we are going to work on. And obviously we are a small group. We are not going to uh, take up all of these vexing questions and get uh, bogged down in them. We are uh, in the business of uh, demonstrating, you know, prototypes based on a smaller footprint. I would like to hear from people about their views on this topic. I mean, if no one is Satish here, I can go uh, yeah. give you kind of my view on it. I think um, it's kind of good timing. Karen must have seen my email to her detailing. You know, okay, Karen did email me. She was asking me what, what sort of contribution. And I kind of told her pretty much the same. I work with a lot of bodies and my assessment is there is going to be a marriage um, yes, some sort of marriage. I cannot give you explicitly what that marriage is, but there is going to be this middle ground, which you said, uh, Vipin. So there is going to be a traditional finance market marriage and the crypto world marriage. My view is that it will be forced via the RPA route, robotic process automation route, where I have seen some of these happening in the traditional supply chain, uh, which is actually working we would do similar sort of contracts. Some legal firms have also started doing this contract, which is way more complicated than you know, capital market contracts. Before I say anything, pe people have to understand the problems, right? Then the processes and the tool, which is the hyperledger in this case, it easily fit in. I have two or three use cases. One use case, the insurance use case we talked about in this meeting, another is the mortgage and the other aspects, Penny May and Freddie Mac sort of aspects, right? Those two probably within is the right sort of areas we should take, sort of define the problem and see how the process will fit in there. Obviously, you need to do the ID problem, which is which is kind of ID onboarding and everything is key to that, right? Yes, um, identity is key. Um, But definitely e-securities and more tokenized e-securities, um, digitized instrumentations is, is pretty much to be done. It will standardize ISDA, it will standardize, it will simplify a lot of problems we see in the capital markets. Uh, it helps in settlements faster. You are right, custody will be separate, will have to be separate. But then there are ways we can solve the settlement problem, which in cases, some cases is 10, you know, T plus seven and all. So there is use cases where you would see immediate sort of applications. So you can define the, I call this the PPT framework. What I mean by PPT is not just the slides. It's like the three slides of one problem, two process and three, the technology. I think when we define say for insurance and the mortgage one itself, you would see exactly where it fits in. 
uh, I can help with that. I can come about, you know, how we can do it. Yeah. Can you put together something uh, very, uh, you know, very, very simple. My PPT is kind of three, three slide, right? What are the problems and how do you think the process have to be refined? And where the tokenization, the, the whole, whole part of, um, and there's problems I'm describing. You're not worried about performance. We're not going to store transactions in, in the chain. Right, we are, we are going to score the immutable contracts where you know the DLT technology is, is key to it. The other thing that uh, uh, we talked about was the fact that there are going to be islands in the sense that many of these um, many of these new tokens will exist on separate blockchain networks or separate networks. And then uh, the payment itself may happen elsewhere. Payment rails may be separate. So we need uh, some kind of a cross chain interaction. And uh, the World Economic Forum and others have said that this interoperation will necessarily happen using cryptographically sealed messages. So I have, along with money, started to define what a cross-chain settlement instruction would look like. It is a basic message and we'll put together something that we we'll pass to the list. But unfortunately, like we said, we are, uh, you know, our, res our resources are limited. So we have to work on smaller problems and things that do not involve lifting and shifting the entire world. We are just going to focus on something that we can actually make an either contribution, either in terms of code uh, and a sample POC and then uh, note the problems to the standard bodies like IWA or TTF, and then they can uh, try to address that. They have huge amount of resources and they are you know, multi-billion dollar companies participating in them. So anything else? Otherwise we can close down the call. Um, can I add something about uh, uh, the ISDA CDM? Um, oh yes, of course. Um, in, 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 uh, it's part of this whole standards that you know, initiate is going on in you know, multiple different dimensions from tokens to what now we talk about IWA. Uh, in the financial capital markets, there is, you know, um, there's a big effort for the past two years in standardizing the entire uh, business process flow um, of capital markets. Uh, uh, you know, we we are, I'm I'm part of this entire I'm part of this uh, is the CDM working group. Um, we started off with uh, derivatives and now you know moved down the chain now and we are addressing uh, digital assets. In fact, uh, you know, I I also included. Uh, Whipping in one of those calls with the ISDA. Uh, so we are now trying to standardize uh, the digital assets and the handling of the digital assets under the CDM. So you, you have a well-defined uh, contract specification uh, from a capital market, specific, uh, capital market, market specific perspective, uh, the life cycle, and also uh, a legal definition uh, of these contracts. So those things cover, but it's purely a business definition and it gives you a good uh, uh, data to model for to work with. Um, most of the regulators are coming on board. Um, we pretty much probably will see that as the uh, common standard to apply any digital uh, projects within uh, capital markets, whether it's on DLT or not, it, is, it has got very, you know, very key uh, relevance. Even within an organization, uh, CDM can play a significant role uh, eliminating a lot of those reconciliation problems. They, they run through two different systems. Uh, the, we, on, this, on the digital asset side, we are trying to you know, put together a framework of how do we do this thing 
uh, the entire life cycle, there are a couple of things missing, which is on the issuance side and on this on the actual settlement side, uh, which are, you know, the traditional settlement is not what we are looking at. Um, so we are working with CID, CID, uh, with ISDA to even define those uh, business processes as well. Uh, with that, we should have a very good framework for uh, digital assets. So, you know, uh, hopefully we would be able to see that in the next, let's say, couple of months, that standards will start evolving. And once the working group uh, accepts the proposals, that will become the standard for handling the entire life cycle of digital assets. So we're hoping to get this thing done in the next few months. Money. Um, Money, a quick question. Um, would it be possible for me to kind of uh, get involved in some of these uh, process related uh, conversations or possibly understand like, you know, some of the high level requirements and, and design thought process that you're currently looking at? I think uh, that's where uh, my interest lies as well. So I, I'd be really happy to kind of support you if anything is required from my side. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We, you know, maybe first we can take it offline and, you know, maybe we can understand a bit more and then sure. we can bring it back to the committee, uh, you know, or the group when, you know, with, with a proper proposal as to what, again, CDM itself is, is today is still controlled by uh, ISDA. ISDA represents uh, International Swap uh, Derivatives Association, you know, so but they are opening it up. It is the, the, the CDM itself is open source and even can use um, uh, the entire infrastructure. And now they're bringing in other standards bodies covering different parts of the capital markets also into the fold. So you would have one standard rather than multiple competing standards, which would not work uh, in, 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 in when you start going to the digitization phase of uh, capital markets. Sounds good. Thanks, Mani. Uh, Mani, quick question. So have they standardize the taxonomy then i mean is the taxonomy still kind of a major standard but you know there are other standards also have they have they trying to bring them all together so in the the the, the taxonomy is still based upon is the taxonomy although they, there is they've taken input from iso 20022 and you know uh, typically, uh, FPML, the, uh, the whole CDM is based upon FPML anyway to start with. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah. and then some other things from PICS as well. But um, this is only a, a business process. It's not a technical implementation, no workflows, nothing. It just simply defines the data model. Uh, it's up to the implementers to actually, you know, uh, put it on, uh, use this uh, standard data model and then build on top of it. So uh, no protocols or, uh, or messaging protocols or workflows are, this, uh, are part of the CDM. It, it defines the business uh, events and for each event, it defines exactly precisely to say uh, how these events are represented in, in, in a CDM, which is nothing but a JSON. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, it links the, uh, the provides the lineage, uh, which is what is lacking in the current uh, data standards today, which is to say, you know, you did your assurance and then you did a trading and then you did an allocation, netting and settlement. Uh, we can actually walk back from settlement all the way back to the issuance because of their lineages. So, which is very important when it comes to compliance and, and, and you know, audit, audit trails and et cetera, et cetera. So none of the other data standards support that. This is the first time we are, we are attempting and, and I think it, it, it's pretty well working at this point. So the lineage... Uh, lineage is implemented uh, purely using DLT, or uh, is a combination of the DLT, no DLT plus no DLT, no DLT. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I mean is the the traceability of uh, one to the other is using some kind of a linkage. Between the hash. The you take the hash, the entire um, yeah. uh, uh, the the economic parameters of the trade, or or whatever the business message is, and you take a, a standard hash, and then you include the hash as part of the message. And much like how you do it in a blockchain, except that you conceptually take the blockchain concept, but you implement it as a data model. And that's what gives you that uh, tight link, uh, linkages or the lineage between various business events. And not only the hash, but also uh, some kind of a cryptographic ceiling, right? The cryptographic ceiling is on, on top. That's up to the parties whether they're going to put through a ceiling. If it's two, if it's between two inter -part, two parties, they can use a DLT or a blockchain or even simple cryptographic handshake. Uh, or if it is internal between two different desks or two different divisions, then they can just use standard databases. So there is no 
there's no requirement as to how the cryptography is going to work. All that they want to guarantee is from, from a data model perspective, uh, the business uh, flow uh, and the uh, and the order of this flow is is guaranteed in, uh, to make sure that there is immutability in the whole process. Yeah, I mean, but using a standard database, there's no immutability because well, because you have the hash. It, if you, if yeah, you, you have the hash, but if if I go and alter the um, both the document and the initial hash, right? That's why uh, I said it's then I can. Uh, it's primarily for internal usages for existing trading platforms. You know, you're talking about uh, legacy platforms that are not going to be able to accommodate or be able to migrate to the new DLT infrastructure. So they can continue to use this the, the data model for their own inter uh, within the within an organization. Intra organization, when you really are talking about true smart contract, yes, you need cryptography on top of uh, CDN. Okay. Um, the um, you know so we are coming to the end of this session. Uh, if anybody else wants to say anything in the next minute or so, uh, please go ahead. I wanted uh, like Elena, who's from Exact Pro, to say uh, or to say something about the data sources, you know, which are also very important here. Uh, but uh, maybe in the next meeting, she can she can uh, provide more de more detail about this because that's another aspect uh, of valuation and IWA is is going to be focused on some of that stuff. Uh, anyway, it's been a great uh, meeting, uh, unless anybody else has anything to say in the next minute or so, closing remarks. Thank you, thank you, Vipin. Uh, the meeting was great, uh, really informative, so thank you so much. Just quickly one from money. I mean, if we, we can sync up uh, offline, um, I'm more um, interested in sort of some of your comments, so I, I definitely would like to understand much better. Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, you know, you can shoot us an email and then we can catch it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I have the, I don't know whether I'm added into the group, but I'll, I'll, find, out, I'll find out through Vipin, maybe. I'll, yeah, I'll, you, you can register yourself on the list, Capital Markets, list.acoledger.org, and you look for Capital Markets SIG, mm -hmm. and it's free to join. Everybody's free to join and contribute. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, guys. All right. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I'll uh, try to put together uh, a uh, minutes of this very freewheeling meeting. Uh, I mean, we had a couple of themes. Uh, thanks again. And I'm going to end the meeting, which will end every, everybody's meetings. Sorry. Uh, until next time, Junji will present and...